Good evening, Gainesville community. Glad that you could be with us tonight as we continue in our Wednesday night study. Last week, we finished some story about Samuel, and tonight I want to go to a different story. In particular, King Hezekiah, he's king of Judah at this point, and um, he, he has a, a fervent heart for God, and I think it's something that we can replicate in this instance that we find ourselves here. So if you want to open up. If you want to open up your scriptures, the second Chronicles and the 31st chapter, I'm going to read verses 1 through 10, and then I'm going to jump down to the very end, which is, uh, I think, verse 20, 21 or 21, 22. So let's read that together. After the Passover celebration, they all took off for the cities of Judah and smashed the phallic stone mountains, chopped down the sacred Asherah groves and demolished the neighborhood, sects, and religious shrines, and local God shops. They didn't stop until they had been all through Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh. Then they all went back home and resumed their everyday lives. Hezekiah organized the groups of priests and Levites for their respective tasks, handing out job descriptions for conducting the services of worship, making the various offerings, and making sure that thanks and praise took place wherever and whenever God was worshiped. He also designated his personal contribution for the whole burnt offerings, for the morning and evening worship, for Sabbaths, for new moon festivals, and for the special worship days set down in the revelation of God. In addition, he asked the people who lived in Jerusalem to be responsible for providing the priest, for providing the priest and Levites so they, without distraction or concern, could give themselves totally to the revelation of God. As soon as Hezekiah's orders had gone out, the Israelites responded generously. First fruits of grain harvest, new wine, oil, honey, everything they grew. They didn't hold back. Turning over a tithe of everything, they also brought in a tithe of their cattle, sheep, and anything else they owned that had, that had been dedicated to God. Everything was sorted out in piles and in mounds. They started doing this in the third month and didn't finish until the seventh month. When Hezekiah and his leaders came and saw the extent of the mounds of gifts, they praised God and commended God's people, Israel. Hezekiah then consulted the priests and Levites on how to handle the abundance of offerings. Azariah, chief priest of the family of Zadok, answered, From the moment of this huge outpouring of gifts to the temple of God, there has been plenty to eat for everyone. With food left over, God has blessed his people. Just look at the evidence. Slipping to the back of the chapter in the very last verse, Hezekiah carried out this work and he kept it up everywhere in Judah. He was the very best, good, right, and true before his God. Everything he took up, whether it had to do with worship in God's temple or the carrying on, carrying on out of God's laws and commandments, he did well in a spirit of prayerful worship. He was a great success. Now, I don't know about you, but there are times in my life when perhaps I have carried out a duty half-heartedly. Maybe not with all sincerity or, or trying to do the best job that I could. Perhaps it was something like this for you, that your mom and your dad would, would cry out, you need to clean your room and you can't go outside until your room's clean. Well, I would shove everything under the bed and I would put things in hiding places and I would just try to make sure that it appeared to be clean. Because the reality is I was more concerned with appeasing some request than I was actually doing the job. If I'd been really concerned, I would have made sure it was clean and not just hidden and had some form of appearance. I think it's possible that we can live these quasi-Christian lives where we do things that people tell us we should do so that we look like a Christian, 
but our heart's not completely in it. We just want the appearance. And it's very concerning to think that we would operate in that, that model of Christianity. But I think it happens quite a bit. And I can tell you that I've even been guilty of it at times myself. Somebody places expectations on us and we just kind of meet those needs. But I'll tell you, something happens when we really believe in what we're doing and who God is. The true prospering of our lives begins when we walk not just in a semi-obedience to God, but with the totality of our heart. That everything that we have, that we want to please God, the world looks a lot different and we act differently because the motivation of our heart is different. When we walk in lockstep with God, when our hearts are so moved by God, in part for what he's done for us, we're willing to do whatever we can to please him. And actually, it becomes pleasing for us. This is an interesting story where the people were set on fire and they could not wait to serve God and they gave everything. And it says it was a great success. Most of us in our lives, we need this sense of understanding that we mean something. And we mean something because God has redeemed us. But boy, once he's redeemed us and we've been obedient, wasn't, isn't it something miraculous to hear God say to us, you've been a great success. They were a great success because they believed that God was calling them to follow him with all of their heart in everything they do and they would hold nothing back what about you are you holding anything back are there parts of your life that you would like to say well you know i want people to think that i'm uh, i'm obedient to god but in reality I, I need to hold on some things to myself i would encourage us let's be like the king let's encourage and help others and we didn't don't just do it yourself he actually gave all that he had for all the offerings. But then he sent out people and said, hey, let's everybody do the same. He was the leader. Now, I'm not sure who you're leading, but you are leading some and people are paying attention. So as you fulfill what God has called you to with the totality of your heart, I believe that you'll bring others along. It's really the story of connecting to God and connecting to our neighbor. So do that. Let God search you. Let him convict you. And if repentance is needed, do it. And then run wholeheartedly to God. Live for him, holding nothing back. The Lord bless you. We look forward to seeing you soon.